Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Euler method to solve a second order differential equation by first breaking it down into a system of two first order differential equations. So the general idea is we have this physical problem we're trying to model. So we have a spring, or basically just a mass or an object attached to a spring of stiffness k. And there are no external forces acting on it. So you can imagine that if we start this box as some displacement, so the initial displacement is something like 3 meters, then the equations of motion can just be derived from Newton's laws of motion. So we get the differential equation. This is the ODE that we're trying to solve. We have the second derivative here with respect to time. And then we have the, the solution itself here. So this is going to give you the general solution to this equation. This is a homogeneous linear second order differential equation with constant coefficients because both the mass and the stiffness of the spring are constants. So I have attached a link to the description that basically shows you a video how to derive this from first principles. But essentially, this is what your general solution would look like analytically. Now, if we give it some initial conditions, obviously because it's a second order equation, we need an initial condition for the displacement and an initial condition for the velocity. So putting those two into the general solution, we get the coefficients a and b, and this allows us to obtain the particular solution to this problem, which is what we're going to use to compare against our Euler approximation. So we're going to have this equation right here. Okay, so that's the general idea. I'm not going to go into the details on how to solve this because you should be familiar with differential equations. And if not, I recommend watching my playlist on differential equations before continuing with this series. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to model this using the Euler method. But as I pointed out in previous videos, the problem with the Euler method and any numerical method in general is that it only works for first order differential equations because you're going to represent some differential equation in terms of its first derivative. So you're going to have something like this. And if you try to use a second order approximation to an equation like this, then what's going to end up happening is you're not going to be able to, because a second order uh, finite difference approximation to a second order derivative is just going to give you, it's going to require two pieces of information. So you will need to know the value of the solution at two points, um, not just the initial value, but also the value that comes after, which is not what you usually know in a physical system that you're trying to model. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to grab our differential equation, and we're going to substitute the variable such that we can actually turn all the higher order derivatives into first order derivatives. So the way this works is we start off by x, which is some new variable u1, we make it equal to x. Now we're going to choose another variable, let's call it u2, and we make it equal to the first derivative of u1, which is just the first derivative of x, and then the first derivative of u2 is going to be the second derivative of x. And because this is the highest order derivative in this equation, what we do is we're going to express it in terms of everything else, so basically solve for the function in terms of x, um, double dot and then you're gonna put this expression into u2 uh, dot so we know that x is just u1 so what you can do now is you can write this as a system of first order differential equations so you take all your first derivatives put them on the uh, right on the left hand side like this and then you're gonna grab your other functions basically you want everything else to be on the other two sides so you're gonna get two equations now this first equation is going to allow you to solve for x for the displacement, whereas this second equation is going to allow you to solve for v, the velocity. So the way you're going to write this down is, well, we know that this is just going to be x dot, and we know that this is just going to be v. So the way we write it down is in the following way. In fact, I'm going to derive this because this might be a little bit confusing if this is the first time you see it. So we're going to start off with u dot 1 so this is going to be equal to u2 so basically what we're going to do is we're going to replace this by x dot equals to the velocity v and now what we're going to do is we're going to employ the Euler method so we're going to replace this by x i plus 1 
minus xi over delta t so replace the first derivative by a finite order approximation or finite difference approximation equals vi and then this is going to become xi plus 1 is going to be equal to xi plus delta t times vi and then you're going to do the same for the second one so you're going to have u2 dot equals to minus k over m u1 and then you're going to express this in terms of the, the first variables that we had so this is going to be v dot equals to minus k over m x apply the Euler method so this becomes vi plus 1 minus vi over delta t and then this is going to be equal to this minus k over m xi and then this becomes this expression right here at the top so this is going to be vi plus 1 equals to vi minus delta t times k over m times ki so these are the two equations that you're going to put into your loop. So now you notice that these two equations are coupled. So this one contains a value of v, and this one here contains a value of x. So you need to solve for them simultaneously if you want to get all the values of x and v. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our octave program. So I have written this in anticipation to this video. And the idea is that we're going to choose we're going to choose some parameters to begin with. So if we go up here, the parameters that we chose for this particular uh, problem were the following. We had the initial value of the position as 3, and we know that the initial velocity is 0, so we put that as v0 here, v0. We are going to choose a mass of k equals to 1, uh, sorry, mass of 1, spring constant of k equals 1, and we're going to choose a step size of dt equals 0 0.01. So basically, we're going to solve for all time from 0 to 50 seconds. And now here we have our exact solutions. So the exact solutions are written in terms of this expression right here. So you can see x0 is just my initial value here. And then for v exact, all I did was differentiate this once. So now I just wrote the expression here. That's fairly straightforward. The cosine becomes a sine we multiply it by this argument here and now for the Euler solution what I did was create two empty vectors x and v so this one is going to contain the values of the displacement this one is going to contain the values of the velocity and now we have uh, we basically put in the initial conditions into those vectors so we have the initial displacement equals to x naught which is 3 and then initial velocity equals to v naught which is 0 and now we initiate our loop. So you notice that I have two equations here. So for every iteration in the loop, what is happening is I'm grabbing the first value of x and the first value of v to calculate xi plus 1. And then doing the same for vi plus 1. I grab the value of vi plus um, minus this expression involving xi. So this loop is solving both equations simultaneously. And the really neat thing about this method is once you work out what your equations are, so you, it is a little bit tedious in terms of how you have to do this by hand before you set up the program. But once you have it, you're actually solving for both the displacement and the velocity simultaneously. So it's a really nice thing. So now what's going to happen is we're going to plot these two. And what's going to happen is you're going to get the following graph. So hopefully you can see this here. And this is a really interesting result because you, you notice that you might expect this to just be simple harmonic motion because of the way that this problem is formulated. Since we go here and we analyze this from a physical point of view, there are no, there's no energy dissipation happening here. The energy is essentially being exchanged. You have your potential energy from your spring and you have your, your kinetic energy from the motion of the box. And those energies are just getting exchanged back and forth, but there's no loss of energy. There's no friction, there's no air drag, air resistance, nothing. So in this case, we would expect the solution just to be simple harmonic motion. The energy is just continuous, so this thing is just going to oscillate to infinity without ever losing energy. So as a result, we observe this kind of graph. Now the interesting thing about this is that you notice that the Euler solution it actually starts off quite nicely and it follows the same phase. It has the same uh, the same frequency as the exact solution. 
but the only issue with it is that as you move forward in time you can see that we're moving forward into 50 seconds here the actual solution it begins to diverge away from the exact solution and this is just a phenomenon that is observed in the Euler method because it's not very a very accurate method as we have discussed before so you can see that bo for both the displacement and the velocity we can see that it just continues to diverge and in fact if we were to just increase the the period of time let's say instead of going to 50 seconds we go to 100 you're going to see that you see this kind of thing happening so now you start off quite well you're very very close to the exact solution but now look at this this is just continues to increase and it is going to keep doing that all the way to infinity so if we make this even larger see what happens now this is clearly just increasing and you can see that it is sort of exponentially increasing with time so the problem with this is very very clear you're limited only to a very small interval of time unless you change the step size so you need to decrease the step size if you want to make the solution accurate within this interval but of course as you move forward in time that solution is not going to be accurate now physically this is a problem because the Euler solution is essentially suggesting that our system is just gaining energy the amplitude of the oscillations are just getting bigger and bigger with time which implies that this system is just getting energy out of nowhere so who knows where the energy is coming from and then it's just getting infinite energy until it oscillates all the way into infinity so obviously that's not physically possible so this is not a very good solution but how about we decrease the step size so let's say we make it 0 0.001 now I don't want to make it that large because it might take too long to run the simulation but let's see what happens when we do this kind of thing so we should see some sort of improvement now obviously it's going to take a little bit longer but you can see now for 100 seconds it is a lot more steady it is still diverging but it is diverging a lot slower than it was before so it is still very reasonably accurate within this interval of time now let's see how that compares with 200 obviously that's going to take a reasonable amount of time to compute but you get the idea there's always a trade-off between computation time and accuracy the Euler method is not particularly accurate but you can see that even if by decreasing the step size by a magnitude of 10 you manage to significantly increase the accuracy of your solution for the whole 200 seconds so this is just to show you how to solve second order differential equations and what the limitations of the Euler method are and in future videos we're going to talk about more accurate methods like the Runge-Kara and we're going to compare them back to the Euler method for solving this kind of problem